Wandering into Fallout 76 online wasteland can be a little daunting for new players to say the least. It's big, it's full of stuff to do and there's plenty of complicated systems to get your head around and it doesn't really hold your hand all too much. It's genuinely what life would be like if you got thrown into a post-apocalyptic nuclear disaster zone tasked with surviving, trying to keep the elements at bay while fending off the monsters that inhabit this nightmarish world, or while managing your hunger, your thirst, and trying to find whatever resources and other junk you can. So without further ado, here's 7 tips to help you conquer the wasteland. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who says that camps aren't essential in Fallout 76 are, well, misinformed. They are truly essential, not just for managing your inventory and stashing your junk and supplies, but to make your experience in the wasteland that much simpler. If you can set up your camp to make yourself truly self-sufficient, then your time with Fallout 76 is going to be that much more enjoyable, and more importantly, far less stressful. That means creating every kind of workbench there you can, having a cooking station, and furthermore, setting it on a river or water source of some kind, and using a water purifying station that generates you a certain amount of purified water each day. It's a lifesaver, literally. On top of that, get yourself a bed, you can rest here and get health back for free, and plant some crops outside in the dirt, which you can whip up into some rations to take on the road with you. If you're hunting for meat, remember to cook them in your cooking station so that they last longer. And also, don't forget that you can fast travel back to your camp for free, provided you're not over encumbered. So take advantage of that when you're out scavenging in the world. For a game that relies on hoarding and scavenging to survive, you'll spend most of the time battling the in-game systems in Fallout 76 if you want to be successful. I mean, you can barely carry anything, even if you become a pack mule, and your base can only carry 400 pounds of items in your stash anyway, meaning you have to be an inventory management wizard to cope with Fallout 76. The number one tip here is if you are looting everything in sight in the open world, whenever you come across a workbench out in the open, scrap your junk for parts. This will mean staying out in the world that little bit longer before you head back. This is the same for any junk you've stored in your stash as well. How much of a difference can it make, you ask? Well, in our experience, we managed to turn around 210 pounds of junk into 70 pounds of useful items on a number of occasions, meaning you can effectively scrap it down into roughly a third of its original weight, which is actually quite mind-blowing. On top of that, you want to keep an eye on the stuff you don't use and sell it, whether it's chems and heavy foods and whatnot. If you're reaching the stash limit, then either sell a load of your biggest bulk items or build more features at your camp. Yes, we basically just talked about scrapping your junk to make more space for other stuff in your inventory and stash, but this one is perhaps far more important. Firstly, hoard every bloody weapon and piece of armor you get your hands on, especially early game. And then secondly, scrap the shit out of it whenever you can. Not only is it a great source of various small parts for repairing other weapons and building stuff around your camp, but it's far more important from another perspective. Mods. Scrapping weapons and or armor will unlock mod blueprints, which are key to turning you into a beast. Want that shotgun to have better hit fire accuracy and a better fire rate? Well, it's a good job you scrapped those 50 shotguns you found lying around the world. It's a lesson that took me a few hours to learn and enriched my experience the moment I did. If you're missing components to create those mods, or for any of your own blueprints for that matter, don't forget to use the tag to search option when accessing a workbench. By simply clicking on the right stick while looking at a weapon, mod, or piece of armor you want to craft, and you don't have the resources to do, the game will stick a little magnifying glass next to the pieces you need in the open world. On that note, keep an eye out for screws, aluminium, and fertilizer early on, as they are very precious commodities later on in the game. The beauty of Fallout 76 is if scavenging and scrapping isn't your bag, you can focus on caps and make your way in the world that way. Knowing where the traders are is key to this, so familiarize yourself with the world. You are guaranteed to find a trader at every train station in West Virginia, so it's worth trekking along the tracks to unlock every single one as soon as you possibly can. Although, stay within the areas at your level, otherwise you'll get smashed pretty quickly. Traders not only buy weapons off you or whatever you can scavenge, but they'll also sell you parts for building your base, repairing your weapons and whatnot. More importantly though, regardless of playstyle, traders around the world will also sell you blueprints that can be used to upgrade not only your base, but blueprints that can be used to improve your weapons, armor, crafting, and offer you more cooking recipes. There's also access to your stash at train stations as well, so if you're over encumbered and don't want to amble back to the camp, seek out a train station instead. 
There are tons of other places around the map with a whole host of shops and that too. So head to the White Spring Resort, east of the huge dried up lake in the centre of the map, which has a load too. Who knows, you might pick up a valuable blueprint or two there, or at least a cool hat. One of our favourite tips to stop the unnecessary trekking back and forth to camp is to not really focus too much on your camp and just drag it to you instead. Yes, for a small number of caps, you can move your camp to wherever you are. Anything you built in the last area will be stored in your camp inventory as well, meaning you don't need to rebuild anything. Just go to the storage tab of your build interface and just place it in your new area. This is an expensive solution, mind, but when you're flush with caps, it can make things that much more bearable. Plus, if you have your camp in the centre of the map and you're always heading back there, you're either fast travelling for a good chunk of caps or running there and back. And remember folks, you can always make more caps, but you can never make more time. Unless you're like Doctor Strange or something, but then does he actually make more time? Anyway, yeah, just bring the camp to you. The same applies for when you're moving regions as well. If you're questing in the mire, take your camp there. And then if you're questing in the forest, just move it there. It will save time and energy and perhaps your sanity. Perhaps the quickest way to accrue weapons, supplies and whatnot with minimal effort in Fallout 76 is to chase down those red plumes of smoke, indicating a government supply requisition. They're easy to spot and they often have decent goodies. You can even take that to the next level and use US government supply requisition orders that you find randomly in the open world at any relay to call in your own. The relay, by the way, is indicated on the map by the antenna symbol. Simples. Honestly though, the best way to get the best items in the game is by doing story quests. For instance, we managed to net ourselves a fat man on the Motherlode mission at the Hornwright Industrial Headquarters in Charleston. Although rewards can actually be random, as other players have reported receiving the drill weapon there. The best weapons we've received in-game actually came from story quests. Not to be confused with miscellaneous quests, we mean quests with actual names. For instance, at the moment we're actually rocking an explosive shotgun that has the range of an assault rifle. It's incredible. Honestly, it's that good. But they all tend to have perks built into them as well. Oh, and also keep an eye out for Scorched officers who drop nuke codes. Get your fair share of them and you can be well on your way to becoming the most feared man on your server. The perk system in Fallout 76 is rather wonderful. It really is. Not only is it fantastically designed, it can actually be your saviour in the Wild Wasteland. For starters, strength is very important. Mainly so you can bloody carry more. There are even perks like Sturdy Frame that make your armour lighter and Pack Rat which makes your junk weigh 25% less as well, which are godsends. Of course, the higher the level the perk, the bigger the effect in terms of gains. Another good one is Good Doggy, which is a great perk in the Endurance category, which makes dog food three times as effective. Because not only is dog food great to see to your hunger, but it heals a great deal as well. Hard Bargain in the Charisma Chain is solid for making more caps. If you're adventuring alone, check out the Lone Wanderer. If you're adventuring as a group, then there are a ton of perks there to help you level up quicker in the Charisma category. By far the most important, like any Fallout games, are Lockpick in the Perception category and Hacker in the Intelligence tree, as these can get you into areas you wouldn't have once been able to get into. Plus, every hack and lockpick you do is worth XP, every time, so it's a no-brainer. On top of that, get Gunsmith if you want to make your own badass guns, whether you want to use them or sell them to other players, and also Born Survivor which also uses a stim pack if you drop below 20% health. That has saved me on more occasions than I care to remember. Yeah. Yeah. So there you have it folks, seven tips to become a master of the wasteland, seven tips to save your time and frustration, seven tips so you can get the most out of Fallout 76. Thanks for watching folks, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Cheers folks, bye.